Welcome to Overworld. For centuries Stoicism has served as a guide for those seeking wisdom and inner strength it offers not only a philosophical theory but also practical tools that we can apply in our everyday lives despite the changing times our problems remain consistent stress, emotional instability and absolute uncertainty today we will discuss the key ideas from William B. Irvine's book A Guide to the Good Life Irvine is a philosophy professor with decades of teaching experience and a practicing STO. Such a combination is rare in our time. Unlike many in the academic world Irvine, view Stoicism as a tool that can positively impact our lives roughly 80% of Stoicism's teachings in the form of theory are often overlooked while the remaining practical 20% takes on the shape of a self-help book whether this is good or bad is up to you to decide. However it follows the the law of order. Where 20% of the effort produces 80% of the results the remaining 20% requires. Significantly more effort in this video. I'll share the key ideas from a guide to the good life that directly affect our outcomes enjoy Karen Solmanson said that. If you look back and realize that all the problems and failures you've experienced in life have made you stronger and eventually led you to a better place that's an empowering real is asian i found the story of astronaut neil armstrong particularly compelling he was selected as the pilot of the lunar module for the apollo 8 space mission to refine his landing technique armstrong trained in a simulator that mimicked the lunar landing process on earth he successfully flew it many times but on may 6th 1968 during his eighth simulated lunar landing he lost control and the simulator began to tumble in the end he had to eject just moments before the simulator would have flipped over and exploded he emerged from this mishap unscathed a few hours after the accident fellow astronaut alan bean walked into the office and armstrong was still in his pressure suit filling out paperwork bean greeted him and continued on it wasn't until later that he learned about the crash with a hint of disbelief Bean returned to Armstrong's office to ask, Did you really crash the lunar module? Armstrong responded yeah I crashed when. Asked for more details Armstrong simply said I lost control and had to bail out. Remember I mentioned that in the phrase. Something bad happened there are two components an objective event and a subjective evaluation the celebrated. Astronaut didn't dwell on it it just happened that's it by the way armor. Strong later became the first person to step on the moon's surface Seneca said. Success is not in words but in character. And reducing desires greatness is confirmed by actions the second of the four noble truths of Buddhism which make up its essence states that the cause of suffering is attachment desiring to have. Something underlies practically all human activity instead of enjoying the good when it happens and experiencing the bad as it arises we tend to grasp what we like and push away what we don't. Often at any cost it's this grasping that creates attachments in the Buddhist view suffering is inevitable but not misery because the latter is caused by attachments which in turn are an attempt to deny the undeniable truth that everything is transient impermanent and not to be tightly held on to and naturally you will suffer when you inevitably start to lose it so consider freeing yourself from unnecessary attachments and embracing the transient nature of life this wisdom has been handed down through the ages and across cultures remember it's not the events themselves that bring suffering it's our attachment to them in buddhism freedom from suffering comes from embracing Impermanence reducing attachments and living in the present moment the central teaching is that nothing lasts forever. And we must learn to accept this truth and not cling to things beyond there. Time you become attached and turn your entire life into a painful fear ridden struggle for its preservation if you are too strongly attached to life you'll become even more afraid of death. Non-attachment in no way means denying oneself suppressing natural impulses or punishing in self-denial it's a life 
Approach devoid of passion and aversion. In all internal and external. Manifestations remembering the. Interconnection between suffering offing. And desires you can say that if a person. Had no capacity for desire there would. Be no suffering conversely for those who. Need everything to be perfect unpleasant. Events will be a common occurrence in. Their likely very unhappy existence in. Our modern digital era where information. Is abundant we often turn to online. Platforms in search of inspiration. Knowledge and practical guidance YouTube. Has become an integral part of our lives. Offering numerous channels on various. Topics however when it comes to. Psychological growth we want to ensure. We choose the right channel that will. Genuinely benefit us psychology is a. Science that requires deep understanding. And quality expertise in this age where. We aim to understand ourselves better. Effectively manage our emotions and. Develop our potential it's crucial to. Find a psychology channel that can be a. Reliable guide on this challenging. Journey and I have excellent news it. Exists I highly recommend a channel that. Combines professionalism a unique. Approach and a deep understanding of. Psychological aspects in human life here. You'll find not just information but. Real value tools and techniques to help. You overcome challenges find harmony and. Become the best version of yourself by. The way the channel's author is my. Friend Katerina Nesterova a certified. Psychologist and a member of the all. Russian profession psychotherapeutic. League I admire that Katerina uses only. Evidence-based methods in her work no. Pseudoscience just a solid foundation. Of knowledge it was fascinating for me. To learn about the eclectic approach. Which combines gal and cognitive. Psychotherapy emphasizing humanistic. Ideals in addition to philosophy. Psychology provides answers to many. Questions you just need to start looking. For them take responsibility for your. Destiny and into your own hands as Irvin. Yum said one of the brightest. Representatives of the humanistic. Approach Yum emphasized creating a new. Therapy for each patient recognizing. That every individual is unique and. Requires a tailored approach to delve. Into the fascinating world of. Evidence-based psychology all you need. To do is follow the link in the. Description or pinned comment I strongly. Recommend exploring this genuinely. Intriguing channel subscribe. And I'll see you there in the comments. As William Shakespeare said I always. Feel happy you know why because I don't. Expect anything from anyone in. 1974 psychologists Amos Fsky and Daniel. Common conducted experiments using a. Rigged wheel of fortune to the. Participants it seemed like the wheel. Could land on any number between one in. 100 however in reality only two numbers. Appeared either 10 or 65 the wheel spun. Once in front of the study participants. And they were then asked two questions. First whether the number on the wheel. Was higher or lower than the percentage. Of African countries in the United. Nation second what in their opinion was. The correct percentage those who saw 10. On the wheel guessed on average that 25%. Of UN member countries were African. While those who saw 65 guessed it was. 45% this behavior was bizarre because. The number appearing on the wheel was. Clearly unrelated to the percentage of. African countries in the UN this rigged. Wheel experiment anchored itself in the. Participant subconscious it didn't stop. There it influenced their subsequent. Perceptions of the world in these. Experiments participants lacked the. Information needed to make a rational. Guess instead of acknowledging their. Uncertainty they deferred to their. Subconscious which was all too eager to. Offer its own guesses however these. Guesses were skewed and locked into the. Numbers 10 and 65 leaving a lasting. Impression on the participants minds. Absolutely all companies use the. Anchoring effect to sell their products. And services let's assume that in an. Apple Store there are iPhones for sale. Let's also assume that the store manager has two retail pricing options plan A is simply priced at $320 for the iPhone and plan B is priced at $400 but with a 20% discount plan B has a psychological advantage because it 
sets an anchor price in the subconscious of customers the regular price of $400 as a result when the iPhone is sold. With a discount customers feel that they got a great deal having saved a whole $80 let's remember the words with which this section began I always feel happy. You know why because I don't expect anything from anyone ancient. Philosophers greatly influenced these psychologists and businessmen they used these effects not just to sell shirts but to improve their lives they achieved this by regularly contemplating how things in their lives could be much worse this may seem like a recipe for a miserable existence but it was quite the opposite by considering how things could be much worse the ancient philosophers were in fact setting an anchor in their subconscious although of course they did not use such terminology the presence of this anchor influenced how they subsequently perceived their current situation instead of comparing it to the ideal state that people often dream of. They compared it to an imaginary worst case scenario and as a result they concluded that things weren't as bad as they might have seemed this process is known as negative visualization and is one of the most popular and useful psychological tools from the story stoic. Arsenal framing is another intriguing psychological phenomenon used by the ancient Stoics while the anchoring effect allows you to accurately assess your life circumstances framing can be used not only to avoid negative thoughts but also to embrace them in some cases. Let's assume a doctor informs you that you have a severe illness and offers you a choice of two medical procedures he explains that one procedure provides a 90% survival rate for the first month, while the other has a 10% mortality rate. Which procedure would you choose many? People are attracted to the first procedure because of its high survival rate however with closer consideration. You might realize that the choice is essentially the same but people don't always think rationally specifically. Their choice can be influenced by how the decision is framed in terms of survival the Stoics understood and appreciated the power of framing even if they didn't use this term to describe it. They recognized that it's not the things themselves that disturb people but their judgments about those things as Marcus Aurelius wrote if you are pained by external things it is not they that disturb you but your own judgment about them and it is in your power to wipe out that judgment now you can mentally liken our lives to our galleries where the paintings are the events we experience daily while our control over the paintings may be limited we have the power to decide how we frame them I suggest that framing makes all the difference a painting in one frame may look terrible while the same painting in another frame may be beautiful in this way optimists are those who usually place the paintings of life in frames that make them look beautiful while pessimists tend to frame them in ways that make them look ugly as Winston. Churchill said a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity and optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty the Stoics referred to this as the discipline of perception writer. Joan Didan tells a story that beautifully illustrates the power of framing in her youth she was invited by two Italians to go diamond hunting in Venezuela and Cayana it seemed like a wonderful adventure and she agreed they hired some South American Indians as workers and secured a heavy cumbersome dugout canoe for traveling down river. During one part of the journey they had to carry the boat over rocky terrain. Under the tropical sun Joan carried her share of the boat and like the others in her group got cuts bruises and sunburn. From the scorching rocks however she noticed that while she and the Italians perceived each cut and injury as another hardship the South American Indians in contrast regarded the experience as a game and laughed later she reflected on the situation all all of us were doing the same work all of us were under the same stress there were no differences in our circumstances except in the frames through which we viewed our conditions the South American natives were accustomed to viewing hardship as a game, as something to be laughed at we were 
completely unaware that we had a choice. In this matter on the other hand the Native Americans who were equally unaware of their choice were in a particularly joyful state they reveled. In the spirit of camaraderie and each step forward was a small victory for them the main idea in this book titled Stoic Challenge in English Revolves Around Our Interpretation of Events Being similar to framing a painting put a Rembrandt painting in one frame and it will look terrible replace it with another and it will appear in all its glory the same applies to the misfortunes we experience in the case of misfortune befalling us the Stoics recommend consciously perceiving it as a kind of trial Senna for instance claimed that fortune places obstacles in our path to punish us conversely she places people in challenging situations providing them with the opportunity to do something bold thus increasing their chances of achieving the greatest excellent Seneca said that fortune hardens those she acknowledges loves is pleased with endlessly tests and makes work without respite as for those she initially seems to favor with boundless favor she leaves them soft and defenseless when an impending storm approaches because if you believe that someone can entirely avoid them your mistaken the eternal ball game of fate will also get its share of blows and anyone who seems to have escaped evil just hasn't experienced it yet Irvin suggests treating failures of any scale as a test of endurance and the opportunity to become better it's crucial to evaluate your results at the end of each day making notes in your journal all this is aimed at maintaining self-discipline anger will behave much more modestly and cease attacking us when it knows that every evening it must present itself before judges presenting what could be more beautiful i try not to miss such an opportunity and every day i call myself to account when the color fades and ceases to amuse the eye when my wife already knowing this habit of mine critically dissects my entire day weighing every word in action i don't hide anything from myself I don't. Skip over anything indeed why should I. Be afraid of my mistakes if I can say to. Myself see in the future I forgive you. But this was wrong however I might have. Overreacted here do not dare to. Associate with ignorant people those who. Have never learned anything don't want. To learn anything this warning is. Correct but expressed with too much. Freedom and instead of correcting. Offends the person for the future not. Only consider whether you are speaking the truth but also whether the person you are speaking to can accept the truth. A good person welcomes correction and the worse they are the more they resent. Those trying to correct them that's it. For today if you enjoy the video I kindly ask you to subscribe like and share your thoughts in the comments this greatly helped with channel promotion and development goodbye until we meet again.